Cam Burroughs is it sounds like it's pretty serious with him. What, what can you say about um, Cam? Is he going to be out for a while? Yeah, I think so. Don't don't know more. I'm not sure if he's going to have surgery or what it is. Um, again, it, it, it's not definite just yet. Uh, I think we'll probably know something by the later the end of this week. How much does that hurt you guys? I know with Damon out, you guys are getting pretty thin in the secondary. Just how much does Cam Burroughs being out hurt you guys? It does. I mean, it, it makes us you know kind of go back to the drawing board and, and trying to substitute and try to get your best 11 guys in the field and trying to match up sometimes with personnels. Um, you start to get thin. Last week in the game, when, when Gary on went out and and uh, Marshawn had to go to corner, kind of limited us into into some nickel packages that we couldn't get into, and um, you know, that kind of what a lot of the preparation is about. And then you got to be able to adjust and adapt when it comes to game time when things happen. I know you nope. can't say much about Damon Webb, but are you hoping to get him back at some point? What, what can you I know say? About nothing, I know nothing about it. Okay. Luke, when you guys look at the amount of attention that Joey Bosa is getting, how often is he? In Facing a double, triple team on a per snap basis. Talking about attention on the football yeah, field yeah. or off the field? Uh, on the, I know he gets plenty off the field. But. Um, it, it, it's you know people are going to make plans for it. You know, when you talk to people after games and things. Sometimes they say, yeah, we're, we're you know, we had a plan that you know whether we're going to try to wham him, or we're going to chip him, or we're going to do some different things to try to slow him down. And um, he, he has to understand that. He has to know that. We try to do a good job at moving him around a little bit so people can't get a beat on him. You know, if he's always the left end, then they know where they can always kind of either put their protection or where they can run some of those whams or crunch plays. Um, so we got to do our best job to try to move him around a little bit so he's not a uh, you know a stationary target. Because even last week in the game, I think that crack block on uh, Taekwon was probably meant for 97. It just happened to be he was on the other side that time. So um, it's things that uh, you know. I guess I I tell him to take take it with a. Uh, with, with some respect, because uh, people are looking looking for you, and, and they're trying to game plan for you, and um, you know, which means other people got to step up too. Yeah, I was gonna say the flip side, you got to be able to use that to your advantage, I guess. Taekwon is benefiting. I think Darren Lee's lined up on the same side as him on yeah. occasion. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, we, we try. Those are things that go through our minds. Those are things that we prepare for and plan for. Uh, a lot more of that stuff on third down, um, but it's it, you know, obviously, it, it takes some. Some thought process on their side too. That, that Joey's got to play left and right. He's got to flip. He's got to do some different things. So, uh, puts a little bit more on his plate. Makes it a little bit more challenging for him. But sometimes, that's a great thing for a guy like him. You got to continue to challenge him and find ways to to keep him more interested in the things that we're doing. Look, you guys have brought in a lot of very talented linebackers. Some have taken a while to get, you know, into the groove of things. Some have been quick. Raekwon contributed last year. Now he's got double-digit tackle, tackles. You know, as you guys might the last few weeks. How has he been able to acclimate so quickly, and what have you seen as it seems like his game is, is flourishing the last few weeks? Well, he's, he's doing a great job for us. I mean, obviously, he's been thrown in a position where uh, that guy's the leader. Um, last year, he had the luxury of Curtis Grant being the, the true leader of the team and defense, and you know he had the ability to go in there like a six-man off the bench, and if something happened, he got to come out. So uh, we've thrown a lot on him, uh, a lot of weight on his shoulders, but the greatest thing you can say about him is he's a worker. You know, every single day he goes out there. He tries to take charge. He takes leadership. He takes that role to heart. And um, you know, he's continuing to grow. Obviously, he's played well. He's made a lot of tackles. There's been some different situations so far in the last couple of games where people have challenged the mic. You know, it's been some run game and things like that where he's in a position to make a lot of tackles, and he's done a great job of it. How did Cameron Williams do in his in his place the, yeah, on Saturday? I mean, what what was your take on that? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Did somebody ask him on that? No, I, I figured you'd be first. Yeah. I don't know why you yeah. waited to like the fourth, the fourth question. <laughs> Usually first. Nice now. <laughs> why change? Yeah, exactly. You get too old to be nice. Yeah. Um, Cameron did a great job. I mean, I think he had ended up having 28, 29 snaps, and um, he did a phenomenal job. Uh, you know, sometimes people get a little worried. They haven't seen him. They're all worried. Where's Raekwon? This, that, and the other yeah. thing. And to be honest with you, I think we got to do a little bit better job at rolling. I got to do a better job. And, and he's a guy that deserves to play. He's a guy that we can put in there. And, and you know, if you're going to play 93 snaps on defense, you got to find a way to get a few guys some uh, some reps to give guys a, a, a break and, and, you know, just obviously mix it up a little bit. So he did a great job. And I, I've got the utmost confidence that if he has to go in there um, and play for us, we're going to be in good shape. And, and following up on that, Luke, when, when a defense has a chance to have a moment of truth, which y'all had, you know, yeah. their, their last possession, I mean, the last place thrown to the end zone, what – what do you think it does for a defense to face up to that and make the play? What does it? What's the long-term benefit? Well, I mean, you can look back. I think in '02, I think we had uh, four games. Pretty yeah. much, it came down to the last play. And it's it's a growing <laughs> opportunity. You know, you you can't. 
Um, you can't design that kind of pressure. Right. You can't you can't uh, manufacture those situations to, to put guys in. Um, and I don't mean just well, we got older guys; they can handle those situations. Oh, we got younger guys; we need no no. But it's the way, way those guys grow together. Yeah. You know that, that they have never been in that situation as a group, as a unit together. Um, so those those things are invaluable. Uh, you just got to continue to hopefully they, you know, that, that it builds upon the year. The the thing that's probably a little bit more difficult is when you got 93 or 94, 95 snaps that a lot of guys are taking. Those, those are still, um, that's a long game. Mm -hmm. um, so where the cumulative snaps might be something that you, you worry about, the, the, the end result, the, the situation that they got to play through and got to bond through um, is invaluable. The, the defensive, defensive penalties, penalties last week. Really played well this year, but there have been some breakdowns. I mean, how close are you, you think, to being the team that you all think you should be? I don't think we're ever going to be there. I mean, that's like I said, we're not worried about um, whether someone evaluates, well, you have breakdowns, you have this. We, we evaluate those things every day, um, and those guys know know that. So, I mean, we're, we're not worried about, hey, where are we ranked or what's what's the situation, how are we doing? You know, we, we take it day to day, and, and we have those objectives each and every day to say, hey, ultimately we got to play our best ball at the end of the year. And are we got to make – where you are right now? It's a I'm, ex I'm excited, to be honest with you. You pull it on 90, the 92nd snap of the game, and you're seeing guys strain and fight and claw. Is it perfect? No. Um, but do they have the makings of what we think has a chance to be special? Yeah. Uh, and, and that's where we're going to continue to build. The defensive penalties last week, Luke, were, um, are they bothersome to you? Yes. Or are, uh, uh, okay. Um, just talk about that. Thanks. Well, they very much are. I mean, it, it's, you know, they're, aggressive penalties are going to happen. There's going to be some aggressive penalties. We know that. We're going to play press man coverage. Um, there's going to be some contact on the edges. The ball's going to be up, and, and we don't want our guys to be passive. We don't, we don't want to back off. Uh, we don't want to change what it is we do. Um, some of the, the foolish ones, the face masks, the things where you take a bad angle and, 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 and put yourself in a bad position to, you know, to reach and to lunge for a tackle and, and end up grabbing a face mask, those are the ones that kind of you, you go back and you say, okay, you know, we can handle the aggressive ones, but the foolish ones are what we got to make sure we, we do a better job. We, we can't put ourselves in those situations. Luke, you said teams are challenging the mic. Why? Do you think teams are trying to go at Raekwon because he's a young guy? Like are, they, are they targeting that? No, I just think that it, the last two weeks you saw some true, almost old-fashioned, old-school running football teams where they were running leads and isos. They weren't your traditional leads and isos that you might see on Sundays, but they're insert players where they're, fi they're finding the bubble. They're trying to put a guy up on the mic backer like an old-fashioned iso. Um, and, and then obviously create that extra gap. So that's probably the first time in a few years where we've seen more and more of those, and that's why you're seeing, you know, is he doing a good job? Yeah, but there's, you're seeing more tackles from the mic and the will and the, things like that because you're getting some more of those challenges of, you know, you're seeing these spread teams create true two-back running game where they're, they're ISO and they're leading on the mic. So those are, those are things that, um, you know that I think you're going to continue to come up throughout the entire year. Is Von Zeke Bell playing had, at a uh, the is second Von... best uh, day? Say that again. I didn't hear that. Zeke had tied the second best rushing day in Ohio State history on Saturday as a historian, as a guy who's been here. Jack Park here. A long time. <laughs> I mean, and having to defend him at times, maybe in camp. Talk about his ability. Just... You know what? I, for us, that were in the in the midst of that game, didn't uh, didn't get a chance to enjoy or, or even realize that Zeke had the type of game he did. Obviously, uh, you, I saw the long ones. I look up and, and, you know, when he breaks away, you know it's over. But uh, I think it's obviously a credit to the entire team. But he, he's special, you know. And then I think those guys know the more opportunities they get to put the ball in those guys, his hand in particular, um, good things are going to happen. Is he Eddie? Is he Archie special? <sighs> you know what? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think he is. I, I'm not sure that the, the combination of speed and power and um, the ability to, to get to the second level and not be tackled, the ability to drop his pads. I, I think he's different. I, don't, I, I can't say I studied or watched Archie. Obviously, I played with Eddie, and um, he's much different than Eddie. I think he's, he's you know, a little bit more dynamic um, than even what Eddie was, uh, and, and in a different offense, too. Um, so I, I think he's special, and, and I think he's <clears throat> just young, too. I think he's just scratching the surface. I don't, you know, for a guy that's 225 pounds that, that can take the you know, the shots like he does, but have the ability to lower his pads and, and eliminate some of those shots is special. Look, and how well is Vaughn? Good. I'm sorry. And then how? run away from... And that's yeah, that's where the, the difference that's where a difference maker is, I think, than even some of those guys you talked about. How well is Vaughn Bell playing as you guys sit there and grade film and watch film and stuff? Are you seeing a guy who's much more confident than he was a year ago? I mean, what, what are you seeing out of him? Vaughn's a playmaker, but, you know, 
as you structure things, you put the pressure on the guys you think can handle it. Mm -hmm. And last week for us, we, we had to put the pressure on Von Bell. We had to ask him to do some things and, and play soloed up. And um, Was that when y'all opted not to go to true nickel and just keep uh, your base defense in there after Gary Un went out? I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, but, but that, no, I mean, like that just in general, I mean, the week before, you know, we, we had some issues. We were, you know, we were playing a little bit passive. We were playing maybe a little more of a pass yeah. type of defense. and. and you know, working from the back end to the front end. And this past week, we knew we had to stop the run and, and insert some guys in the box from things that happened the week before, which means sometimes that, that means Vaughn's going to be on his own in, in a lot of situations. Yeah. And, um, you know, we didn't lose any sleepover because we know that Vaughn took the challenge and, and was up to the challenge and was going to do a great job. Taekwon, Taekwon is a guy that maybe a lot of OSU fans don't know about among the defensive starters. Just how would you describe his personality and kind of his ascent into this role as one of the team's playmakers? Taekwondo's doing a great job. I mean, he's still a young guy. I mean, he's you know he's um, developed. You know, he redshirted us uh, two years ago. Played a played a bit last year. Um, we knew about him. We knew he had the ability. We knew he had some explosion. Uh, he's a straight line, really, really strong guy. And I think you're just starting to see the surface of what we think that Taekwondo could be. He could be a dominant force in in the run game because he's so strong. But yet he's got the the explosion to be a heck of a pass rusher. I mean, you see him chase down the tailback from behind a couple times in that game, and um, it's just really impressive. And for a young guy, uh, really like his future. Luke, it seems like Ty this sometimes takes. About Joe Burger's character. Go ahead. Go ahead, Lori. What do you see about uh, in Maryland's offense right now? Um, it's still early, but I mean, you know, obviously knowing Mike Loxley, the guy that uh, has been an offensive coordinator in this league for a long time. Um, he does a great job. I mean, they're going to move the ball around. They're going to mix it up. They're going to, you know, they're going to keep you keep you on your toes. They're, you know, they're, they have the ability to run the quarterback, which they haven't done as much from what I've seen this year so far. Um, but you know, that's in there. Uh, you know, I think they're one of those guys where they're they're kind of bouncing back and forth with quarterbacks. They're trying to figure out who they are, what best suits them and fits them um, as they move forward. And real quick on Ty, this seems like he takes bad angles sometimes. Is that? Unfair criticism, or would you say that is fair? Uh, it's unfair criticism from you, but fair <laughs> criticism maybe from me or Coach Ash. Um, <laughs> well said. <laughs> but uh, no, it, it's a game of angles. Football is a game of angles, and, and that's what it all comes down to. You know, and, and everybody's got a different angle based on their abilities and things like that. But um, the aggressive nature of things, things like that, are going to be able to happen in a game. You've got to be able to adjust and adapt. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not just a one-man show. It's guys look like they lose angles because other guys lose leverage at times too. Luke, how different is it? Is the game inside the red zone? I mean, I'd ask an offensive coach. Not really well, so. uh, is, it, is it just a different? How tough is it for an offense to catch it in the red zone? Sounds like a loaded question to me, um, so I'm, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna help. I, it's different. Every every team's different. You know, there, there's a lot of teams like like Indiana. They don't change. You know, whether they're on the 20 yard line backed up or they're on the 15 yard line going in. We actually refer to the red zone as different than a lot of offenses. We don't consider it a red zone until they get to the 12 yard line. Um, so so there's a lot of discrepancy, and you can look at national stats, and they'll lie to you because you know they keep charts on from the 25 up and, and then they they say a field goal is a is a score and on defense they get inside the 12 we say a field goal is a win um, so there's a lot of different things teams are different some teams don't change uh, the field does shrink um, you know the box does get loaded uh, people are going to take away your probably initial things and make you do something you're not normally going to do clay go ahead and then last question joe Berger's play um sure you coached him up on that and also just what kind of uh, he's a very eloquent spokesman for this program as a walk-on let's talk about what he's accomplished here. well we don't even try not to even refer to him as a walk-on in that way because they're not you know him as a Craig Feta guy and Joe Berger I mean, there's no difference between those guys and anybody else and that's a beautiful thing and I actually get the luxury of coaching him um, every single day because he's in the linebacker unit uh, I can't say that I was the one who was coaching him up on that, on that in particular <laughs> punt uh, or uh, uh, punt return, um, but he brings so much. I mean, you can't imagine the the what him and Craig Feta and some of those guys that just work their tails off every single day um, bring to us. They don't obviously get on the field a ton, and they don't get noticed unless something unique happens. Um, but they're far more. Um, responsible for what the, the, the linebacker unit really is, uh, the heart and soul of that unit, um, but also development of the defense just because of their work ethic and their character and the things, the unselfishness that they do um, each and every day.
And so when they get that one moment in the spotlight, is that pretty cool? It's it's great. I mean, I, I couldn't have been happier. Um, obviously, in the midst of the game, I know I, as I came home, my wife said the, my kids' favorite play of the whole game was uh, Joe Berger making the play on the uh, punt return. So um, there's there's some definite fans out there outside of his family, um, and they might be most of them in my family. <laughs>